I will first invite John Connolly, who is refreshingly not going to make a, a PowerPoint presentation today. Uh, evidently, uh, he thought it's a dry topic, and uh, Paul has a meaty topic, but I'm sure they'll do a great job on that. John, you have heard him before on our health tech uh, session, as well as uh, he has uh, given some great feedback uh, to some of you who decided to pitch last time. John is Vice President of Operator Development of RNA Diagnostics, which is in the personalized medical diagnostic sector to assist in management of cancer and other disease states. And I'd like to also congratulate John because he has just recently got another large dose of funding. John, welcome. <coughs> Thanks a lot for having me, Lal. This is always a uh, it's always enjoyable to talk to uh, entrepreneurs about what they're passionate about, building their businesses. And um, just a way of background, I um, I may not be typical for a uh, technology uh, entrepreneur. I, I went to McGill where I studied philosophy and economics, and then I worked as a computer salesman for. Um, in three years, I went back to business school at, uh, at Ivy. Imagine some of you are uh, MBA students or in business school grads. Um, but I have a lot of experience in, in, in reviewing business plans. I spent 10 years doing M&A work for uh, Canada's largest food company and became food where uh, we bought companies all around the world in the food business. I actually started up a, a food company in India for, uh, for McCain Foods and uh, grew uh, potatoes all over in northern India, which is an interesting experience. I'd be glad to talk to some of you folks about that. And then I spent another uh, six or so years with uh, MBS Capital, a venture capitalist, uh, uh, making investments in life science companies, um, and again, yeah, reviewed a lot of business plans. So over the years, I've, I've reviewed hundreds of business plans, and I have a good uh, nose and eyes for what makes a good business plan and what makes a business plan that you don't want to read. And if you're in the business of pitching your business to investors, you definitely want them to read your business plan. So uh, maybe I can give you some insights into that. So four or five years ago, uh, my partners and I started a company called uh, York MedTech Partners, which is an incubator for MedTech companies here in Ontario based on uh, intellectual property coming in the university sector. And we've started, uh, we've made four investments and we've started two, two companies in the molecular diagnostics space. Um, RNA Diagnostics, which is the company that won the PyQuest uh, business plan competition last year. And another company called Proteocyte, which we just started uh, uh, less than six months ago, which again is focused on a biomarker for tumor investments, which is an intellectual property human uh, Sinai Hospital here in Toronto. And I wrote both business plans with my colleagues for both those companies, and so I'm sitting in the same seat that you are, constantly revising and improving business plans. So it's not a theoretical exercise for me, it's something that uh, we do on a regular basis. So, why do we want to write a business plan? In fact, nobody gets up in the morning and says, I got to write a business plan. It's pretty boring and it's painful. And, you know, it's just uh, it's something that we've got to do because someone asked us for it before we entered a business plan competition. And now you have to produce it if you want to show up and win the prize at the end of the business plan competition. So, uh, Lala asked the, can you talk about the process of writing a business plan? And then Paul uh, is going to talk about what goes in a good business plan, and then we're going to hear about what makes a good uh, presentation based on a business plan. So I'm going to talk about the process of, of a business plan, and what is it that, you know, why do we want to write a business plan in the first place? And what is it that you're trying to do with your business plan? You're, you're trying to raise money. Well, that's a 
it's a good idea because you probably unless you got a business that generates revenue right away, which is pretty difficult in the health sciences area, you're going to need to raise capital. And if you're in the uh, medical technology business like we are, you're probably going to have to raise quite a lot of capital uh, to get the market before you raise uh, or even generate any revenue. So it's uh, it's critical that you have a good business plan and that it's uh, that it answers the, the, the requirements of the folks that you're pitching it to, which are your your potential investors. So, what are they looking for? Well, really, what they're looking for is, is a really good story. And the story is how can they make money with your with their investment in your company? That's what they want to know. But you got to tell the story in a way that's not too long and not too short. It doesn't uh, include everything in the kitchen sink, but it includes enough to get them interested so they want to talk to you more about what, uh, what your story tells them. And so the, the most important thing is to find a compelling story as to why they should invest in your company as opposed to some other company. And that compelling story is I mean, it can be different for every different business, but ultimately, you either have to have a story that generates revenue for somebody, it uh, saves, which is the best one, because people like to invest in things that generate new revenue for them. Or you have a business that saves people money, that's a good <coughs> idea as well. And it, but if you've got a business that saves people money, you better save them a lot of money and in a hurry. So, you know, when we got uh, creating a business plan is um, it's actually quite a lot of hard work, and you need to think very, very carefully about what you're doing. So, when we entered the Thai con Thai contest for uh, RNA diagnostics last year, we thought we were pretty good because, like I said, I've reviewed hundreds of business plans in the past. I went to business school and I've been in business a long time. And I'm pretty smart, and uh, so are my partners. Not as smart as I am, but I help them along. And then we wrote the first version of the business plan, and I look at it and say, "This isn't so good, guys. You're not so smart. We got to work a lot harder to make this thing work well." And we have different skills. My, my partner Ken Pritzker is a scientist, and medical uh, professional. And uh, my other partner, John Jordan, is a professional accountant. And as I said earlier, I'm, I'm a uh, philosopher and uh, an economist. So we come kind at of things from a different, different perspectives, and each of us bring a, a different uh, view on you know what is our compelling story. And so what we ended up doing is we ended up working together. In fact, it's mostly uh, Ken and myself, and we would sit with a computer on the screen projected and we would write parts of the business plan and we would review them and then we would take it back and we would rewrite it and rewrite it. And after about 20 rewrites we had a product that was pretty good. It's not fantastic but it was it was it was, it was good enough to tell our story in a compelling way that convinced the Thai judges that, that there was something there that <coughs> Uh, deserve the second look, which is really what you want with your business plan, is you want to entice the, the folks that are uh, you know, thinking about investing in you to sit down with you and, and start to really understand what you're trying to convey to them on, on, the, on the written page. And, um, and so working collaboratively as a team is a much better idea than trying to do it all by yourself uh, in a vacuum. And so getting, if you don't have a big team that can write, then I would suggest that uh, you should uh, prepare your plan and then put it by people who are experienced in business plan writing or just good uh, editors, and they can help you to improve the plan on a, uh, on a regular, <coughs> regular basis. So to me, the most important part of the, of the business plan is to say, well, what is that problem that we're solving? Is it really a big problem? And you should ask yourself this question too, because you're investing a lot of time in your businesses. And if you're only solving a marginal problem that isn't really very important, then you should really ask yourself why, why are you doing this at all? Because unless you're solving a very serious problem, 
then it probably doesn't warrant a lot of investment. Uh, it may not, I mean, in social media, it may not be a problem, it may be a big opportunity, and you may be approaching it in a completely unique way and creating a, a new niche. But for most businesses, it's a problem that you're solving in a way that nobody else thought of before that's going to become a winning, a winning business. So, okay, so you got you have a big problem. You know, how big is it? Is it really as big as you say it is? Do you have evidence that, that can demonstrate that, that that's the case? And is it believable by people who will be looking at your business plan? You know, and, you know, I, I never saw a business opportunity that was less than a billion dollars. But, you know, do you have real evidence that it is a billion dollars? And, you know, how did you come up with those, with those numbers? You gotta, you know, include that logic in your, in your business plan. So let's assume you have a big problem and you solve that problem. Does, does your product really solve the problem that you've identified? And does it do so in, in a unique way that's different from all the other folks? That are, because if there's a big problem, there's going to be other people with other approaches who are going to try and solve that problem in a unique way. And so we're, why is your, your solution better than the other solutions that are being offered in the marketplace today? And so you have to be able to identify why it is that your solution is unique. Is it faster, better, cheaper? Because if it is, it should be 10 times faster, 10 times cheaper, you know, and 10 times better, or 100 times, you know, or 1,000 times. That'll catch people's attention. If you say you're twice as good as the next guy, that's not very interesting, and it's not going to be very compelling to you. So let's assume that we've got a unique product. Is it, is it, do you have the ability to deliver that product? You know, is there, are there, are there too many barriers to, to getting that product across the, uh, into the hands of potential users? I mean, in, in our business, there's regulatory and reimbursement challenges, i.e. Uh, FDA and other uh, European body for, uh, regulating medical products that we have to deal with. Do we have a realistic story on how we're going to solve that problem? You know, do we have a way to convince uh, healthcare payers to uh, provide reimbursement to this uh, for this product? Again, that goes to does it save money for, for these uh, reimbursement agencies? I don't know how many of you were in. There seemed to me to be quite a few companies last time we spoke that were in the health sciences area. And if you don't have a product that saves money, significant money for the users of this technology in the healthcare field, then you, I don't think you have a chance of being a winner. Because healthcare payers around the world are looking for ways to reduce their costs. Not, they're not looking for new technologies that increase their costs, <coughs> even if they produce better outcomes uh, for patients. And that's, uh, that, that's changed in the last uh, 10 years, I would say. Today, that's a, that's a must have. So, you know, at, at RNA Diagnostics, we have a, a pretty simple. Uh, value creation. We have a test that tells oncologists whether or not chemotherapy is working or not. And this is important because most chemotherapy doesn't work for most patients. So we identify those patients quickly and get them under alternate therapies. This saves the patients from, from unnecessary and harmful treatment and saves payers from paying for all those unnecessary treatments that cause a lot of uh, serious side effects. So the value proposition is pretty straightforward and it's understandable by most of the people that we talk to. With Proteus site, again, we've got a product that measures tumor aggressiveness quickly in prostate, and we can identify those patients that can be treated in less aggressive manners, and that reduces the incidence of uh, adverse events like um, incontinence and impotence, which most of the men in this room would be pretty significant uh, benefits. So again, it's a simple, straightforward uh, solution, 
saves money for healthcare payers and provides real benefits <coughs> for their uh, for their for the patients. So it's a it's a simple story. If you got a big problem, you solve this problem in an elegant way that's straightforward, and then all the rest of the business plan is about how are you about to go do that. What's unique about your product? What sales channels are you going to use? What are your tactics? What are the intellectual property issues and strategy that you've got? What's the regulatory path? What's the reimbursement path? And this will, whatever the, the, the key drivers are in your business, once you set up the problem and how you solve it, then it's a question of just telling the story and you have the management team. What are you going to do with, with, with the investor's money? And you're going to get to a goal line quick enough so that you've created something of real value before you run out of money or before you get to, to revenue. And so those are the things that, that Paul's going to talk about. And um, <coughs> those are the details that fill out the business plan. I would say that you don't want to make your business plan too long because you can never tell the complete story in your business plan regardless of you know, how good a writer you are, because uh, your audience reading these plans are, have a limited uh, attention span, and they want to have, uh, they don't want to spend more than maybe 20 minutes on an interesting plan. you got to hook them in the first two pages. If you don't do that, they won't read the rest of the plan. And then you have uh, you know, you've lost. If you can't tell the story quickly, you know, in the first couple of pages, which is your executive summary, and the, the, the reader won't go through the rest of the plan. So it's really key to set up the story properly, and then if they're interested, then they'll read through you know, maybe the whole plan, maybe not. But they'll, you've got to give them enough of a compelling story so that they want to call you up and talk to you more about, about your plan. So that's the uh, that's my story, and uh, I'm happy to talk to any of you about uh, uh, my experiences in, in this business, and uh, I wish you all the best of luck.